This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Since its release in 1986, The Legend of Zelda has captivated the hearts and minds of gamers all over the world. The franchise has seen many iterations over the years, with multiple games considered among the greatest video games of all time. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is one of those breathtaking masterpieces, with an epic adventure to explore the depths of Hyrule. With the release of the highly anticipated sequel, Tears of the Kingdom on May 12, 2023, It's only right that we go through the evolution of The Legend of Zelda once more. This is the evolution of The Legend of Zelda. Let's start at the very beginning. Shigeru Miyamoto, a name that is no doubt familiar to Nintendo fans, created a few small indie franchises, such as Donkey Kong, Mario, and The Legend of Zelda. I'm of course kidding, these are some of the best-selling and most loved franchises in the world. When Miyamoto was a child, he loved adventures. He spent days exploring and discovering things as he went. One day, he came upon a cave, and after days of hesitation, went inside with just a small lantern. These adventures inspired Miyamoto to create The Legend of Zelda, a franchise that largely takes place in the fantasy kingdom of Hyrule. As the legend goes, the world was created by three goddesses. Together, they also created the Triforce, a magical object that would grant a wish to anyone who possessed all three of the goddesses' virtues. However, should there be an improper balance of these virtues, the Triforce would be split. Throughout time, only a select few have wielded the individual powers granted by the Triforce. Ganondorf, a dark lord seeking to overthrow the Kingdom of Hyrule, has long possessed the Triforce of Power. Zelda, the noble princess of Hyrule, wields the Triforce of Wisdom. And Link, a brave young hero, bears the mark of the Triforce of Courage. Only by reuniting the three pieces could the ultimate power of the Triforce be obtained. In pursuit of the ultimate power and in defense against it, many battles have been fought between these characters of good and evil. Link. You are our final hope. The fate of Hyrule rests with you. The name of the series was a bold choice, considering the chief protagonist and playable character is actually Link, not Zelda. I'm sure a few of you will say, wait, what? That boy is not Zelda? Nope, that is Link. Link is modeled after Peter Pan. Miyamoto confirmed it in an interview, adding he was a big fan of Disney. I mean, it's... Very obvious. <laughs> okay, I'll let myself out. It also helped that distinctive features, such as a long green hat and pointy ears, made Link stand out in early games of the series when graphics were very limited. Throughout the years, Zelda games have been spread in multiple timelines. It's fair to say that Miyamoto probably didn't envision The Legend of Zelda becoming the mammoth franchise that it is today. After all, there have been 19 major releases with one more on the way. I can't believe it's more than five years already since the release of Breath of the Wild. It feels like it's about time we can finally go on a new adventure. I also have a feeling the 20th major release will be a very special one. Now though, let's dust off the cartridges and go back in time to when our adventure first began. The original Legend of Zelda, the game that started it all, was released in February 1986 for the Famicom in Japan and the NES more than a year later in the rest of the world. The groundbreaking new game invited players to play as a boy named Link in an action-adventure title. Link must defeat Ganon to save Princess Zelda and become the hero of Hyrule. The gameplay was revolutionary, pioneering many features that would later become industry standards. It was completely different compared to the linear gameplay of games like Mario Brothers. The Legend of Zelda gave you choices and allowed players to explore both overworld and dungeon sections freely, providing you had the necessary items required for some areas. This variety and freedom to take different paths 
separated it from other games at the time. But what really set it apart was the fact that you could play the entire game without ever saying a single word. That's right, not a single hello or we must find the Triforce before Ganon does. Not even a thank you, kind sir or madam, for rescuing me from that dark dungeon. Just nothing. And it was amazing. It was also the first console game with the ability to save one's progress and resume playing later. Funnily enough, if we go through the entire timeline of the Zelda games, we find the original Legend of Zelda almost at the end. Despite this, it was the one that introduced the main characters, setting, and lore that would come to be loved and appreciated by many for years to come. Upon completing the game, players also unlocked a more difficult second quest. While the idea of a trickier replay wasn't anything new, the fact that areas and items were rearranged, offering different levels to complete, was innovative. The Legend of Zelda was extremely well received by fans and critics. It went on to sell more than 6.5 million copies worldwide, making it the fifth highest selling game on the NES. This was an amazing feat, considering the game was only available in Hyrule. Fun fact, even though the main character of the Legend of Zelda series has been around for more than 35 years, we still know very little about him. This is mainly because he doesn't really talk. Miyamoto said that this is because he wants the player to feel like they are Link, and having a speaking protagonist would break this illusion. In 1987, Zelda II – The Adventure of Link arrived as a sequel to the original. It picked up the story only a few years after the first game. The now 16-year-old Link notices a strange mark on the back of his hand. According to Impa, this means that he is the hero chosen to awaken Zelda, who's fallen under a sleeping spell. To awaken her, he needs the Triforce. The story and setting were created by Takashi Tezuka who was also a very important figure in creating Ocarina of Time, The Wind Waker, Breath of the Wild, and countless other hugely popular titles, such as multiple Super Mario Bros. games. For Zelda II, he wanted to create a fairy tale adventure and was inspired by fantasy books such as The Lord of the Rings. However, instead of Bilbo Baggins, you play as the Badass Link who goes on an epic quest to save Princess Zelda and defeat the evil Ganon. The Adventure of Link came with significant changes to the gameplay and visuals. It combined a top-down view with side-scrolling action, and it introduced a leveling up system. Interestingly, it was the first and only Legend of Zelda game with experience points. Since the game had more role-playing elements, it led to a debate about whether or not the Zelda games should be classified as action role-playing games. Miyamoto disagreed with the RPG label and instead considered Zelda as a real-time adventure game. He said that he was, quote, not interested in systems where everything in the game is decided by stats and numbers. This time around, the combat system in Zelda 2 was more challenging. The enemies could actually fight back and put up a decent fight, as opposed to feeling like obstacles in the first game. This made for a more engaging and more enjoyable experience when fighting through the game. And for those of you who hate the game, you're probably just tired of hearing Ganon laugh. Zelda 2 did not reach the heights of the first game in terms of sales, but it still sold 4.4 million copies on the NES, placing it 8th among the best-selling games for the console. Fun fact, the late and great comedian Robin Williams was a huge fan of the Zelda series, so much so that he named his daughter Zelda. He would often tell stories about how much he loved playing the games and how happy they made him. I am Robin Williams. This is my daughter Zelda Ray Williams. Uh, I am Zelda Williams. Zelda, this, this story about you. Yeah. <laughs> What a great name for a girl, Zelda. The Legend of Zelda – A Link to the Past is one of the most beloved video games of all time. It came out in 1991 and was released on the Super Famicom in Japan and the SNES in the rest of the world. 
Due to the success of previous Zelda games, Nintendo was able to invest a substantial amount. This led to a remarkably expansive world, with a light and dark world. It was the first Zelda game to feature a parallel world, a feature that would become a mainstay in the series, which offered gamers the chance to explore familiar, yet varied environments. Locations such as Hyrule Castle turned into the Pyramid of Power. A Link to the Past returned to the overhead view and gameplay style of the original Legend of Zelda. However, graphical upgrades brought about by the SNES meant that players benefited from more detailed scenery and beautiful colors. A Link to the Past is a prequel to the original two Zelda games. The story is more elaborate than the first two. Yet again, Link is on an epic adventure, exploring dungeons and fighting enemies, all to save Zelda and Hyrule, for a short while anyways. This Zelda was groundbreaking for its time. It had many puzzles, which worked really well in the game. The all-important Master Sword was introduced. The Legendary Blade continues to come back in other Zelda games. The Master Sword was inspired by Excalibur. A Link to the Past had amazing dungeons, story, soundtracks, and enemies. Many still regard it as one of the greatest games ever. It also became a huge commercial success, selling over 4.6 million copies worldwide, placing it seventh on the list of most sold SNES games. In December 2002, the game was ported to the Game Boy Advance. Now gamers were able to explore the parallel worlds on the go. Just like the SNES version, the game has been universally acclaimed by critics. It is one of the highest rated games ever, with a Metacritic score of 95. Critics praised the game's graphics, gameplay, and story. Nintendo Power called it the finest game ever made for the Game Boy Advance, and gave it a perfect score of 10 out of 10. IGN described the game as an incredible achievement, and gave it a 9.6 out of 10. GameSpot also praised the game, calling it one of the best games ever made, period. Fun fact, did you know that the iconic main theme music was created in a single night? Nintendo's composer, Koji Kondo, initially wanted to use the song Bolero, but developers discovered that the song was still under copyright. Kondo, therefore, came up with his own tune, although it is seemingly still heavily inspired by Bolero. Link's Awakening is the first entry in the series to release on a handheld in 1993. It was released on the Game Boy. Link's Awakening was quite unique in that it was one of the few games in the franchise not to take place in Hyrule or to feature the Princess Zelda, or indeed, the Triforce Relic. The story does continue after A Link in the Past. After Link saved Hyrule, he went on a journey to sail across the oceans and came upon a rough storm. Lightning struck and everything turned dark. Link found himself stranded on the Koholint Island. There, he meets and befriends a girl named Marin, and is tasked with awakening the Windfish in order to escape the island. The game was loved for its graphics, gameplay, and puzzles, but it lacked something. That's right, it lacked color, which is why Nintendo made Link's Awakening in color for the Game Boy Color. Both versions were a massive success. The original sold 3.8 million copies, and the color version sold another 2.2 million. While I won't cover all Zelda game remakes, I will feature the remake of Link's Awakening that came in 2019 for the Nintendo Switch. It is a fantastic remake that keeps its charm while having the visuals of Play Mobile. Honestly, I love Link's character design for this game. I mean, just look at the little green outfit and that cute face. Link's Awakening also introduced a character more powerful than Ganon, the shopkeeper, when you steal something.
The remake was praised and received a score of 87. Forbes called Link's Awakening an excellent remake of an already faultless Zelda game. The remake of Link's Awakening was so successful that it even outsold the original versions of the game combined. In total, an impressive 6 million copies were sold. After an agonizing five-year wait came Ocarina of Time in 1998. It was released on the Nintendo 64. Ocarina of Time is considered one of the most important games of all time due to its revolutionary 3D graphics. This became possible due to the use of the N64's capabilities. The addition of 3D graphics was a pivotal moment for the Legend of Zelda series and in video game history. The game was released on a 256 megabit cartridge, the largest capacity cartridge Nintendo produced at the time. Ocarina of Time also introduced multiple features that have since become commonplace in 3D adventure games. These include a targeting system that allowed players to lock onto enemies and a more sophisticated camera system. Character models were far more realistic and detailed, plus there were many more side quests and items to collect. Ocarina of Time takes place before all the previous games in the series. In the story, Link has a fairy companion named Navi. Hey, listen! Players traveled through different realms and time periods on a mission to stop Ganondorf, the king of the Gerudo tribe, from obtaining and using the Triforce's ultimate power and ruling the world. In the child world, things are fun and happy. Then you become an adult, and everything sucks. It's almost like real life. After the Ocarina of Time, the timeline splits into three branches in which Zelda games take place. There is a timeline where the Hero of Time is defeated, and the Hero is triumphant in the Child and Adult Era timelines. At the end of the Ocarina of Time, Zelda sends Link back in time to be a kid again. That's why there is a Child Era besides the Adult Era. The music in Ocarina of Time is some of the most memorable and iconic music in all of video gaming. From the moment you first hear the famous theme, you know you're in for an adventure unlike any other. But did you know that the beginning of the theme song of Ocarina of Time actually came from the flute tune from the very first Legend of Zelda game? The music for Ocarina of Time was, yet again, composed by Kiji Kondo and perfectly captures the mood and atmosphere of each location. I spent even more time at Gerudo Valley than at the Water Temple just to listen to this theme. Ah, nostalgia. When I have kids, I'll tell them this is the official Spanish national anthem. While the 3D graphics noticeably aged compared to the newer Zelda games, these graphics were actually groundbreaking for its time and helped shape the way 3D games were made moving forward. Despite its graphics, it's still an amazing game to play, even after 24 years. Ocarina of Time has been hailed as one of the greatest video games of all time. In fact, on Metacritic, it received a score of 99, making it the highest rated game on the website. Critics praised the game's graphics, gameplay, music, and story, with many calling it a masterpiece. GameSpot's Greg Cassavan wrote that Ocarina of Time is an instant classic and one of the most important and influential games ever made. IGN's Matt Casamassina called it one of the most important, influential, and downright fun video games ever created. It also became a commercial success, and Nintendo managed to sell a whopping 7.6 million copies, making it the third best-selling game in the Legend of Zelda series of all time. Fun fact, Nintendo planned to make an expansion for the Ocarina of Time named Ura Zelda. However, it was designed for the Nintendo 64 disk drive, which was, due to commercial failure, only released in Japan. Nintendo scrapped the release of Ura Zelda and instead used parts of the expansion for the Ocarina of Time Master Quest. Only two years after the release of Ocarina of Time came Majora's Mask in the year 2000. 
Majora's Mask was a welcome addition to the Zelda franchise, providing a more lighthearted and humorous take on the series. I'm, of course, kidding. Nintendo has been known for its innovative takes on the Zelda formula to keep Zelda fresh. Love it or hate it, Majora's Mask is one of those different takes, in which Link is in search of his fairy, Navi, whom he lost at the end of Ocarina of Time. In search of Navi, Link finds Termina, a land that is under threat of destruction from a giant falling moon. Majora's Mask is a sequel to Ocarina of Time and is the first Zelda game in the Child Era timeline. The story is very dark and creepy, so it's good that they rated it E for everything is terrifying. The music also perfectly captures the feeling of the dark and eerie world, making it even more frightening. The graphics and gameplay are almost similar to its predecessor, but that doesn't stop the game from being original. The three-day system, the ability to change into different beings using various masks, and the dark but beautiful story make this an incredible Zelda game. Majora's Mask had the impossible task of living up to the expectations of Ocarina of Time. Nonetheless, the game was universally acclaimed with a very impressive score of 95. This makes it one of the highest rated games of all time. Many praised the game's visuals and atmospheric soundtrack. Game Revolution said in their review, quote, The two new editions of Time and Masks work well. It takes a little longer to get into this Zelda, but there are moments when the game really hits you with all of its intricacies and mysteries, and that makes it all worthwhile. While Ocarina of Time sold 7.6 million copies, Majora's Mask only sold 3.4 million copies. Fun fact, Ember Lab made an incredible animation about Majora's Mask called Terrible Fate. Honestly, it's one of the best animations I've ever seen. Just imagine if they made a full-length movie with this quality. Oracle of Ages and Oracle of Seasons are two Legend of Zelda games that were released in 2001. Both saw life on the Game Boy Color and have different stories that happen in the timeline after Link's Awakening. In Oracle of Ages, Link has the Harp of Ages, which he can use to travel between the past and present, while in the Oracle of Seasons, Link has the Rod of the Seasons, which he can use to solve puzzles and change the seasons. Both games also had a different focus. Oracle of Ages focuses more on puzzles, while Oracle of Seasons focuses more on action. The games basically copied the controls, graphics, and sounds from Link's Awakening, and although they weren't revolutionary games in the Zelda series, they sure were fun games to play on the go. Both games were a critical success and sold around 4 million copies each. Advancing the series in 2002 was The Legend of Zelda Four Swords, which was released for the Game Boy Advance in a package deal bundled with A Link to the Past. Four Swords was significant because it was the first multiplayer game. It required two to four Game Boy Advances to be linked up, if you'll pardon the pun. The plot of Four Swords takes place before the events of Ocarina of Time and introduces the evil sorcerer Vati as the new main antagonist. While you fight over rupees, together with two, three, or four links, you have to defeat Vati and save, you guessed it, Princess Zelda. The game was well received for its colorful graphics and multiplayer, while it was criticized for its short length. The bundle of A Link to the Past and Four Swords sold 1.8 million copies worldwide, which is less than any of the other previous Zelda games. As part of the 25th anniversary of the Legend of Zelda series, a remastered version known as Four Swords Anniversary Edition was released for the Nintendo 3DS and DSi. In 2000, Nintendo showed the world a demo for a new Zelda game. The director of the series, Eiji Anuma, hated it because it looked like a scene from Ocarina of Time. While Zelda had been known for being innovative, so they completely changed the game and gave it a cartoony art style. The Wind Waker was released in 2002 for the GameCube. Ironically, at the release of the game, young teenagers were not happy with the childlike cartoony game and wanted a more mature Zelda. 
This created a lot of controversy for the game. This 10th installment is most well known for being the first cell-shaded Zelda game. Cell shading is a lighting and texturing technique that gives the game a more cartoon-like appearance. It also introduced a new camera feature, so you could move the camera around Link. The Wind Waker is a sequel to Ocarina of Time and kicks off the adult era. In the story, the kingdom of Hyrule is flooded because the adult era didn't have a hero, so the goddesses had to submerge the world to contain Ganon. Toon Link sets sail on an adventure to save his sister. It also introduced new characters like Tetra. Spoilers, it's just Princess Zelda. And guess who is also back in the game? That's right, Ganondorf. While the game was hated by many at the start, it is now being cherished. As time passed, people became more familiar with the art style and realized how great this game actually was. Sure, the sailing can be a bit tedious at times, but this game is how a great adventure game should be. In this beautiful and rich world, there's a lot of exploration, fun, and unique dungeons, fantastic music, fun side quests, and an amazing story with characters that develop throughout the story. For many, it's one of their favorite Zelda games. Eurogamer gave it a perfect score and called it simply a stunning, magical game. IGN gave it a 9.6 and said in their review, it's Zelda's unrivaled design, balanced and varied, and it's polished play mechanics and control that ultimately set the game apart from just about every other competitor on the market. On Metacritic, out of 80 critic reviews, it received a very impressive score of 96. The game sold 4.6 million copies and became the fourth highest selling GameCube game. Despite that, Nintendo wasn't too happy with the sales numbers, since it was noticeably less than the sales of Ocarina of Time. They even changed directions to a more realistic styled game for Twilight Princess. In 2013, Nintendo made an HD version for the Wii U. And wow, this just looks incredible, even in this day and age. This remake added improved graphics with high definition visuals and added various new features, including the Swift Sail, which decreased sailing time by half. The Wind Waker HD was very well received and loved for its updated visuals and new features. On Metacritic, it received a score of 90, which is noticeably less than the original. Nonetheless, the critics praised the game, like Eurogamer, who gave it a perfect 10 out of 10, and said, just like its young hero, the Wind Waker is crisp and energetic, spirited and soulful, just a little bit wayward, and it hasn't aged a day. The remastered version managed to sell 2.4 million copies. Fun fact, Princess Zelda's name was inspired by that of Zelda Fitzgerald, an American novelist, dancer, and painter who was noted for her beauty. She was the wife of famous American novelist Francis Scott Fitzgerald. Miyamoto said, quote, I really like the name Zelda. I asked him if I could use it, and he said that would be fine. And that's where the title, The Legend of Zelda, was born. Want to know how Link received his name? We'll discuss that later in this video. So let's continue. The next game to grace the GameCube was Four Swords Adventures in 2004. Existing in the Child Era timeline, it sees Link on a quest to restore peace to Hyrule after finding out that an evil counterpart of himself has been created known as Shadow Link. The game was significant in that it is the only Zelda title on console so far to incorporate multiplayer elements into its main campaign. It also allowed a single player to control more than one Link at a time, utilizing various methods such as formations to make full use of this mechanic. You can control more than one Link at a time. Talk about efficiency! It is obvious that the game took heavy inspiration from A Link to the Past, in terms of the music, graphics, and locations. It is also the first two-dimensional Legend of Zelda console since the aforementioned title in 1991. While Four Swords Adventures was praised for its multiplayer gameplay, puzzles, and graphics, it didn't live up to the heights of many other Legend of Zelda titles. On Metacritic, it received a score of 86, which is still not bad, of course. Four Swords Adventures did not do well in sales. In fact, it's the worst-selling Zelda title by far. In total, only 810,000 copies were sold. Fun fact, 
To play Four Swords Adventures multiplayer, you didn't need more controllers as you would expect, but everyone was required to bring their own Game Boy Advance along with a link cable. The twelfth game released in the Zelda main series was The Minish Cap. It was produced for the Game Boy Advance in 2004. It came prior to previous Zelda games in terms of chronology and expands on the story seen in Four Swords and Four Swords Adventures. This time Link wears a talking cap named Ezlo. Ezlo has the magical ability to shrink Link to the size of his little finger. This way he can go to the Minish, a race of tiny people. If you're lucky, you might even see Frodo Baggins or Kevin Hart there. The shrinking ability is a creative mechanic that can also be used to avoid obstacles and solve puzzles. Link and the Minish aren't the only short things in the game though, because the story is pretty short too. Despite that, the Minish Cap continued the legacy of the successful series and was generally well received among critics with a score of 89. Eurogamer said in their review, if you can accept that it won't last you as long as you might like, then your quest is clear. Leave no stone unturned in your search for this game, and then leave none of its stones unturned either. The sales weren't great though. In the same month as the game was released for the Game Boy Advance, Nintendo also released the Nintendo DS, which undoubtedly had a negative impact on its sales. In total, the game sold 1.8 million copies. Two thousand six was a big year for video games, especially for fans of the Legend of Zelda franchise. That's because not only did the long-awaited The Legend of Zelda: Twilight Princess finally arrive on the GameCube, but it was also a launch title for the brand new Nintendo Wii console. Talk about a double dose of gaming goodness! Twilight Princess was hotly anticipated by many gamers due to its portrayal as a more realistic and mature Zelda game. After all, it was the first in the franchise to receive a T rating by the ESRB and a 12-plus label by Peggy. The combat system is essentially the same as the Wind Waker, but it adds more variety. The Wii added motion controls. This meant you could aim your bow with the Wii remote and swing the remote left and right to do sword attacks. Twilight Princess takes place 100 years after Ocarina of Time. All the main characters are back in a story where Link tries to prevent Hyrule from being overtaken by a corrupted parallel dimension, the Twilight Realm. The world and story are pretty dark. I'm pretty sure this scene gave some kids nightmares. Link takes the form of both a Hylian and a wolf. In the story, he is also assisted by a mysterious creature named Midna. The story was inspired by the Lord of the Rings films. Go back to the abyss! The game was developed with a large, convincing world in mind, one with a vast scale to meet the expectation for fantasy worlds that audiences had become accustomed to with the Lord of the Rings. By the way, the hero's shade is a character who teaches Link new combat techniques. But did you know that this is most likely Link from Ocarina of Time? I bet the hero's shade is pretty stoked to be able to teach his younger self everything he knows. Twilight Princess took many aspects from Ocarina of Time and improved upon them tremendously, like 1UP, who said in their review, it's not a reinvention of the genre like Ocarina was, but it's much better because it takes all its predecessors' raw ideas, perfects them, and creates an experience that's at once new and familiar. Most people who played the game say it's an excellent adventure, praising its engaging story, graphics, and challenging gameplay. Though some think it's too linear compared to other Zelda games and not innovative enough. Nonetheless, it received a score of 96 on Metacritic, making it one of the highest rated games of all time. IGN even called it the greatest Zelda game ever created and one of the best launch titles in the history of launch titles. By 2015, a staggering 8.9 million copies of the game had been sold worldwide. Compared to all previous Zelda titles, the sales were very impressive. It became the best-selling Zelda game, although it's now overtaken, but more on that later. Twilight Princess received an HD treatment in 2016, being remastered for the Wii U. 
After the success of The Wind Waker HD, Nintendo was encouraged to pursue another high-definition remaster. However, since most of the Zelda team was working on Breath of the Wild, an external development studio named Tantalus Media created Twilight Princess HD. Besides the enhanced graphics with newer textures, the game also increased its speed by speeding up some cutscenes and reducing repetitive gameplay elements. The HD version also took advantage of the Wii U gamepad. The game was loved by most. God is a Geek said about the remaster, Twilight Princess HD does everything its predecessor did, but better, making it one of the most triumphant remasters yet and cementing it as one of the best games of our generation. Twilight Princess HD had significantly less success, with a score of 86 and 1.15 million copies sold. Fun fact! Did you know that The Legend of Zelda is one of the most popular gaming franchises of all time? As of March 2022, more than 136 million copies have been sold worldwide. Phantom Hourglass was one of the first Legend of Zelda games to come out on Nintendo DS in 2007. The DS was a groundbreaking console that changed the gaming landscape forever. It was the first console to feature a touchscreen and two displays, which made some things much easier for gamers. Like when sailing, the second screen could be used as a map. One of the most welcomed additions was the ability to customize the in-game ship with different ship parts. This would inspire customization options in future Zelda games. Phantom Hourglass's story takes place after the events of The Wind Waker in the adult era timeline. Link gets help from Captain Lineback in his journey to save Tetra and defeat the new antagonist, Bellum. The game is divided into two gameplay types, sailing between islands and exploring the islands and their dungeons on foot. Critics were often highly positive towards it, though the online features were considered to be too simple. Phantom Hourglass received a score of 90 and won several awards, including Nintendo DS Game of the Year from GameSpot, GameSpy, and IGN. In total, 4.1 million copies were sold. Next came Spirit Tracks in 2009. The game takes place after its predecessor in New Hyrule, a kingdom founded by Tetra after the events of Phantom Hourglass. In this game, Link is able to travel with a steam train. All aboard the Hyrule Express! Next stop, New Hyrule. Just like The Wind Waker and Phantom Hourglass, the game also features a cell-shaded art style. As with the ship in the previous title, the train and spirit tracks can be customized. Plus, minor changes were made to the gameplay that allowed for a smoother, more enjoyable gaming experience. Perhaps the most noteworthy detail of Spirit Tracks is that it was the first Zelda game to feature multiple endings that could change Link's ultimate outcome. There are three different ending scenes dependent upon the choices made by the player. Spirit Tracks received a score of 87. GameSpot was a fan of the title and said, Spirit Tracks' exciting new mechanics and classic gameplay make it one Zelda adventure that has got a full head of steam. But not everyone was a fan of the flute mechanics, like one reviewer said, great dungeons, very linear story, and horrible flute game mechanics. It simply doesn't work. In the end, 10 points for dungeons and minus 9 points for the flute. In total, 2.6 million copies of Spirit Tracks were sold. In 2011, Nintendo created Skyward Sword, which was created for the Nintendo Wii. The Nintendo Wii allowed for the use of full motion controls, which many people on the Zelda Reddit really seem to hate. It also required gamers to use the Wii Motion Plus peripheral. The device allowed for more complex motion to be interpreted than the Wii Remote can do alone. The game takes place on the floating island of Skyloft and the surrounding islands. To navigate through Skyloft, Link can fly using his Loftwing Bird. To get to the other islands, you'll have to use a special technique that involves hurling yourself off of a cliff and hoping your loft wing will catch you. In terms of chronology, Skyward Swords takes place at the earliest point in time so far. The game details the origins of the Master Sword, a recurring and important weapon within the series. 
While the storyline is placed at the beginning of the franchise's continuity, game designer and director Eiji Anuma has stated that Skyward Sword will not necessarily always be the first entry in the chronology. This, of course, opens the possibility for future games to occur earlier. Skyward Sword has beautiful music with unique themes that capture the feel and atmosphere of the different locations. It was the first Zelda game to use a live orchestra for the majority of its tracks. Using an orchestra to create the score for Skyward Sword enabled the composers to create a greater range of emotions than they could have with synthesizers alone. Something new the musicians did for Skyward Sword was producing unique themes for specific characters, such as Link and Zelda. The game was specifically praised for its new style of combat, although not everyone was astonished, as some critics complained about the game's linearity, lack of places to explore while free roaming in the sky, and some people wanted a darker-themed Zelda game, like Twilight Princess. Well, it just goes to show that you can't please all of the people all of the time. Nonetheless, the game received a spectacular score of 93. IGN gave it a 10 out of 10 and said, Remarkably, this Zelda game manages to reshape its control scheme, design sensibility, and pacing all at once, while still telling a brilliantly powerful story featuring some very memorable characters. Skyward Sword carried on Nintendo's legacy of success with 3.5 million units sold worldwide. In 2021, gamers were so excited about the remastered Zelda Skyward HD, they raised their swords high in the sky. The game was released for the Nintendo Switch and had significantly improved graphics, playing in 60 frames per second and added quality of life features, such as autosave and the ability to skip dialogue boxes and cutscenes. However, it only received a score of 80. Skyward Sword HD did outsell the original with 3.9 million copies sold. Fun fact, to celebrate the 25th anniversary of The Legend of Zelda, many of the most iconic themes were played in an orchestra. One of those beautiful songs was the Ballad of the Goddess from Skyward Swords. But did you know the song is a reverse version of Zelda's lullaby? Who knew playing the song backwards would sound this good? I bet Link did, being the musical genius that he is. Continuing to push boundaries, A Link Between Worlds was the first Zelda title developed for the Nintendo 3DS in 2013, and makes use of the handheld's stereoscopic 3D capabilities. Just like in the previous Zelda titles, solving puzzles and clearing dungeons is a fundamental part of the gameplay but it also introduced new mechanics, like an item rental system where you can purchase and rent items from the beginning from Merchant Ravio. The game also introduced a mechanic where Link can transform himself into a wall and become 2D. A Link Between Worlds served as a sequel to A Link to the Past and also took place in Hyrule. There is also a new kingdom that acts as Hyrule's dark twin named Lowrule. Young adventurer Link has a new villain to fight, the mysterious Yuga, or the Van Gogh of Hyrule, who is turning people into paintings. Many critics see A Link Between Worlds as a worthy successor to A Link to the Past, keeping the traditional elements of the series while also introducing new mechanics. Digital Spy said in their review, quote, Painting over any cracks that were starting to appear in the Zelda series, A Link Between Worlds is a refreshing experience and another Nintendo 3DS masterpiece. A Link Between Worlds continued the franchise's success with a score of 91 and sold over 4.2 million copies. Fun fact, ever wondered how our favorite Green Chad hero received its name? According to Miyamoto, he decided to call the protagonist Link because when they started designing the video game, they imagined that the fragments of the Triforce would in fact be electronic chips. He said they imagined that the game would take place in both the past and the future, hence the name Link, because it represents a link between one and the other. Another explanation of the origin of the name is also stated in the Nintendo book titled Legend of Zelda Hyrule Historia. This explanation is slightly different from the time travel ability and segments of the Triforce being made of electronic chips. In this book, the protagonist was given the name Link because he connects people together and that he was supposed to spread scattered energy to the world through the ages.
In 2015 came Triforce Heroes, which was also released for the 3DS. After so many fantastic Zelda titles, the 18th main installment was a bit of a letdown. It was kind of like getting a new pair of shoes that were two sizes too small. You really want to love them, but you just can't. Together with your buddies, you can start this new adventure. It's not easy being a hero, especially when you're a trio of heroes who can't seem to agree on anything. However, with the kingdom at stake, our heroes must put their differences aside and work together to save the day. You can stack three players together to create a totem pole, reach enemies on higher elevations, and solve puzzles. You can also play the game solo, though that is not even half the fun. The story takes place several years after A Link Between Worlds and is very silly. The game takes place in Hytopia, a kingdom where its citizens are obsessed with fashion. Yeah, not exactly what you would expect from a Zelda title. I mean, sure, Link always wears the latest in green fashion, but this is different. Triforce Heroes was not as well received as any of the other Zelda titles. For many, it's their least favorite Zelda game. On Metacritic, it only received a score of 73, making it the worst rated Zelda title by far. But hey, at least it's not as bad as the CDI Zelda games, which we'll talk about in a minute. You're not afraid of dragons, are you? Of course not! Games Radar called Triforce Heroes a playful co-op experience that shines with mates, but isn't as precise or polished as a mainline Zelda. Not surprisingly, Triforce Heroes is one of the worst-selling Zelda games, with 1.3 million copies sold. In addition to the main series of games and their remakes, Zelda characters have also appeared as guests in several games, including Mario Kart, Soul Calibur 2, and Super Smash Bros. Then we have The Legend of Zelda TV series, which aired in 1989. The plot follows the adventures of Link and Princess Zelda as they defend the Kingdom of Hyrule from Evil Ganon. The TV series was considered terrible, cringy, and painful to watch. IGN rated the DVD release a 3.0 out of 10 for its poor writing, repeated plots, and over-the-top acting. Uh, Link, where are your manners? Stand up and meet Prince Facade. This is my friend... Well, uh, an acquaintance. Uh, somebody I know slightly. His name's Stink. Link. Pleased to meet you, your highness. Luke Plunkett of Kotaku noted, Shoddy animation, poor voice work, exacerable humor, and terrible writing make it one of the decade's worst cartoons. Well, at least it spawned an internet meme. Excuse me, princess. Well, excuse me again, princess. Hmm. Hopefully one day there will be a good Legend of Zelda TV series that actually does the franchise justice. Hey, we can dream, can't we? I mean, the series has so much potential. It would be great to see all of the classic characters and locations brought to life in a new and exciting way. Fingers crossed. There have also been a number of Zelda spin-offs, including a few Zelda games for the Philips CDI console. To say they're terrible would be an understatement. The games received very little funding and development time. And to make things worse, the CDI console wasn't even designed as a game console. It's almost like the games were intended as a joke. Just look how bad the animation and voice acting of Link are. Dinner. Oh boy! I'm so hungry, I could eat an Octorok! This is exactly the reason why Link doesn't talk. Fun fact, over 200 animators gathered together to recreate all of the Zelda CDI game's cutscenes. The result is mind-blowing, with all kinds of different animation styles. It's astonishing how much work went into this project. And finally, there is the Hyrule Warriors series, which has been running alongside the main series since 2014. The Hyrule Warriors are hack and slash games with settings and characters from the Legend of Zelda series. 
The latest entry was released in November 2020 for the Nintendo Switch, named Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. The game is a prequel to Breath of the Wild, going back 100 years when all of the characters are still alive. It features an original story, which centers around the Great Calamity, a catastrophic event that took place before the events of Breath of the Wild. The game explores more backstories and relationships between the characters. Who doesn't love a good Bacoblin fight? I must protect everyone! In Age of Calamity, you can not only take on hundreds of these little critters, but you can also do so using a variety of different characters, including Zelda, Mipha, Urbosa, and more. Plus, with the added bonus of being able to use all sorts of different weapons and items, the possibilities for creative Bacoblin bashing are endless. While some praised the game, like IGN, who said, It's hugely varied roster of characters, solid combat mechanics, fun progression and clever adaptation of Breath of the Wild's vision of Hyrule is a joy to play and discover. Others weren't that impressed, like Metro Game Central, who called it, the best Dynasty Warriors style game ever made, which means it's slightly north of mediocre with simplistic combat, weak storytelling, and a whole lot of repetition. On Metacritic, it only received a score of 78. However, it was a huge commercial success as over 3 million copies were sold in the first four days. That look on your face tells me that you have no recollection of me, however. I think you are now ready, ready to hear what happened 100 years ago. In 2017, Nintendo released one of the best games of all time, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. The development of Breath of the Wild took five years, with series producer Eiji Anuma aiming to rethink the conventions of Zelda. This man is really responsible for putting Legend in the Legend of Zelda franchise. Nintendo had never developed an open-world game on the scale of Breath of the Wild, so they took inspiration from Shadow of Colossus and Skyrim. For the art style, the team drew inspiration from various Japanese anime, such as Studio Ghibli Productions. Breath of the Wild was a boundary-breaking game to revamp the legend and include elements such as a detailed physics engine, high-definition visuals, and for the first time in the main series, voice acting, although Link still remains a silent protagonist. When the beast regains its true power, this world will face its end. Fun fact, even though Link doesn't talk, he does yell and groan throughout his adventures. These noises were made by a number of voice actors over the years. Some were, surprisingly, females. For Young Link, developers were searching for a voice that wasn't low in pitch. That's why Young Link was often voiced by a female. Breath of the Wild was released on both the Wii U and Nintendo Switch. It takes place at the end of the Legend of Zelda timeline, but it's not clear which one since it has aspects from multiple timelines. Link awakens from a 100-year sleep to find that the world has changed and Hyrule has been ruined. The game's story is told through a series of flashbacks that Link experiences as he travels through Hyrule. These flashbacks detail the events of The Great Calamity, a cataclysmic event that occurred 100 years prior to the game's events. The story focuses on Link's quest to defeat Ganon, the evil being responsible for the calamity and restore peace to Hyrule. While previous Zelda games have been praised for their creativity, Breath of the Wild takes things to a whole new level. The game's massive open world is unlike anything else in the series, where players discover hugely different areas, each with their own climate, monsters, and land. Players can traverse through the world any way they want, whether it be by climbing up mountains, swimming through rivers, or riding through dense forests. The game also features a day-night cycle, as well as a weather system that can impact gameplay. Breath of the Wild is a departure from previous games in the series, which were primarily linear affairs with little room for exploration. 
The game instead features a large open world to explore, with various side quests and activities to undertake. The game also features a number of new mechanics, such as the ability to cook food and use it to restore health, as well as the ability to climb any surface. But perhaps the most impressive aspect of Breath of the Wild is its combat. The game features a brand new combat system that encourages players to be creative in their approach. Link can now use a variety of weapons and items in battle. Whether you're using a bow and arrow to pick off enemies from a distance, sneaking up for a stealth kill, or going in guns blazing with a sword and shield, the game provides a wealth of options for taking down your foes. Throughout the world, there are many enemies to fight, side quests to be done, and shrines to complete, and Korok seeds to be found. Spoilers, after finding all 900 Korok seeds, you will receive golden shit. Well, thanks, Hestu. Besides the amazing world, innovative gameplay, emotional story, and gorgeous graphics, the game also has many heavenly soundtracks, such as the beautiful theme that opens your eyes when you see the enormous Hyrule landscape for the first time. The peaceful and calming songs when you explore the world. The magical soundtrack you discover in Korok Forest. If you ever feel alone in Breath of the Wild, just remember there is always a Korok hiding somewhere nearby. The stressful field battlefield song that increases your adrenaline when you're in a fierce battle. And the sad and emotional Mipha's theme. The music perfectly captures the feeling and exploration and wonder that is central to the game. Breath of the Wild also has two DLCs, the Master Trials and the Champion's Ballad. The Master Trials adds a master mode for those wanting a much tougher challenge. And there are new items to collect, including items known from previous Zelda games like the Majora's Mask, Midna's Helmet, and Phantom Armor. The Champion's Ballad adds a challenge the Trail of the Swords, in which players can go through different levels, each having its own layout, enemies, and traps. The DLC also adds new items, including the one-hit Obliterator and a new great way to travel, the Master Cycle Zero. Breath of the Wild's reception has been overwhelmingly positive, with critics praising the open world, gameplay, art style, and story. On Metacritic, it holds a very impressive score of 97. Many call the game a masterpiece, and it has been cited as one of the greatest video games of all time. Nintendo Life gave it a perfect score and said, This game is a revolution for the franchise, but the Legend of Zelda essence is still there. Its soul remains. The end result, then, is a captivating experience. IGN gave it a 10 out of 10 and called it a masterclass in open-world design and a watershed game that reinvents a 30-year-old franchise. While God is a Geek said, Breath of the Wild is an absolute masterpiece and may well be the best Legend of Zelda game ever made. In short, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is a must-play game that is sure to please fans of the franchise and newcomers alike. If you weren't a Zelda fan before, Breath of the Wild would definitely make you one. Rightfully so, it won countless awards, including several Game of the Year awards. Breath of the Wild also became a huge commercial success, with 28 million copies sold, making it not only the most sold Zelda game, but also one of the best-selling video games of all time. Fun fact, before Breath of the Wild was finished, the development team let Miyamoto try out the game and share his advice. But to their surprise, all he wanted to do was climb trees for an hour. They asked, do you want to look at other stuff? But he just kept on going. Now we know what the next silly spin-off game should be. The Legend of Zelda, Link's Tree Climbing. And finally, on May 12th, 2023, The Legend of Zelda, Tears of Joy, I mean Tears of the Kingdom, will be released for the Nintendo Switch. The highly anticipated 20th main installment of the Zelda franchise took over five years to develop and was first announced as Breath of the Wild 2 during E3 2019. Since then, more has been revealed in another teaser in 2021 and the trailer in September 2022. One of the new elements of the game includes floating islands above Hyrule, with players able to soar between them, similar to Skyward Sword, 
Another new feature is Link going through walls. As it seems in the trailer, Nintendo was probably tired of speedrunners going through walls, so they made it a default ability. In order to make the game's experience special, game producer Eiji Anuma announced development would take longer than expected, which is probably a good thing. I'm looking at you, cyberpunk. He also stated it would be worth the wait. As the legendary game designer Miyamoto once said, a delayed game is eventually good. A rushed game is forever bad. Plot twist, the game is already finished. They just need more time to hide all the Kurok seeds. Tears of the Kingdom will be a sequel to Breath of the Wild. Nintendo stated it will be a massive adventure that will take you up into the skies. The fact that they're reusing the world and engine but still take over five years to develop the game makes me very interested to see what they come up with. I already know there will be something big Nintendo is hiding from us. Everyone's saying they can't believe it took Nintendo five years to develop the sequel to Breath of the Wild. How do you think Zelda felt waiting a hundred years for Link to wake up? And keep in mind, every time you watch this video, you're one hour closer to the release date. Building a website doesn't have to be hard. With Squarespace, you can create a stunning professional website without any hassle. Keep your audience engaged and generate revenue with gated, members-only content all on one easy-to-use platform. Member management, email communications, and audience insights are just a few clicks away. Want to create a website for your business or share knowledge with a blog? Go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to www.squarespace.com slash flatlife to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. As we eagerly await the next installment of this epic franchise, why not gather around the campfire of the comments section and tell us what your favorite Zelda games are? I hope you enjoyed the evolution of The Legend of Zelda. Please subscribe and hit the bell icon if you did.